I thought this would be a good time of year and time of life to practice stress management. And there's many ways that yoga addresses that. First is you could argue that, you know, any decent yoga class will help you manage stress. And that is true for sure, because yoga at its core is about nervous system regulation. So taking you out of your fight or flight response, which is your stress response, and grounding you in your parasympathetic rest and digest response. But there are some practices in particular that help us with that a bit more than others. And we're gonna explore this in a couple different ways. And tonight's class in, in particular is going to be inspired by the yin tradition of yoga. So if you've not practiced yin before, it's a lot of long holds <laughs> and a lot of deep breathing, which is a great way to get out of your head and into your body, therefore helping to tone your nervous system for this week. We're going to practice yin inspired yoga. And I say inspired because it's going to have my little twist on it as it normally does. So go ahead and sit comfortably wherever you are. Relax your shoulders down the back, crown of the head lifting. And just feel your body relax here and become aware of your root, the base of the body, the pelvic floor region. And if you took the chakra series, the first and second chakra, really when we need to manage our stress response, we really have to get grounded and stable in our first two energy centers. Maybe feel like a weightedness to that region of the body, the pelvic floor, kind of holding you, grounding you, keeping you stable. And then keeping that inner sense of stability, bring your awareness to the sensation of your breath at your throat. And at the throat, constrict the glottis or the back of the throat slightly to make a hissing or ocean type sound as you breathe, ujjayi pranayama, audible inhale and audible exhale. Continue to breathe audibly, audible inhale, audible exhale, and we'll blend these awarenesses. So with your inhale, audible inhale, draw all of your awareness, all sensation in your body, anything that feels stressful or frenetic, draw it down to the root, the pelvic floor. That's your inhale. And with your exhale, send that energy down into the earth beneath you like um, tree roots spreading downward. Inhale audibly, draw all the stress, any weariness in your body down to the root. Exhale, just expel it down into the earth. Just a couple more times. And as you complete this exhale, release the technique, keep your awareness at the root. And let's chant Om three times. A deep breath in. Oh. 
Bring your palms to your heart, lower the chin. Honor yourself as you are in this moment, body, breath, energy, mind. It's in service of that, that we'll practice tonight. Rub the palms together. Take the heated palms over your eyes. Rush back over the top of the head, down the neck, bringing yourself back to your space. And we'll begin on our backs tonight. So go ahead and come to lay down. Take your time getting there, but when you get there, you might wanna hug your knees into your chest for just a few breaths. Feeling the back body grounding into the earth, that connection to the planet. Now, one thing you're going to notice as we practice this yin inspired class is that there's not a lot of warm up that happens. One of the philosophies of yin is that as you hold the postures, the body will warm itself up. We will be doing some warm up though, <laughs> um, but we're going to start holding postures very quickly here. So go ahead and release the feet flat to the floor, heels about hip width apart, heels underneath your knees arms by your side and keep the arms by your side. Inhale, lift the hips into the air, bridge pose. Exhale, release down. Let's do two more. Inhale, hips lift. And exhale, lower. Good, we're gonna hold this time. Inhale, come into the pose and stay. Feet are flat on the floor here. Soften your throat, soften your jaw. And then as you stay here, let's re-engage Ujjayi Pranayama, the audible breath. Soft sound inhale, soft sound exhale. Be sure not to clench your teeth here, soft jaw. Audible inhale, audible exhale. Staying for just a couple more breaths. Long holds, deep breathing. Inhale. Then exhale, release the hips down slowly. And feel sensation. Good. Giving your left foot flat on the floor, please cross your right ankle center of the left thigh and flex the right foot, pulling the toes back. Good. With your next inhale, press the left foot into the floor, lift the hips into the air, coming into half bridge and stay. Audible breath. The Ujjayi Pranayama, the audible breath is gonna save you in this class tonight. It's a great way to help calm the nervous system, especially when you're feeling yourself kind of frantic or panicky. Keep squeezing up through the left side. Keep the right foot flexed, protecting the ankle and the knee joint. Soften the jaw. Couple more breaths. Good. 
Carefully exhale, release the hips down. Keep the leg crossed, bring the left knee in towards your chest. You can reach between the legs with your right hand, both hands holding behind the left thigh, and then draw the left knee deeper in towards your chest. Keep the right foot flexed, protecting that joint. Deep breaths here. Now, if you have the space in your hip, what you can do here, as, as well as bringing the left knee into your chest, is to use your right elbow to push away your right knee from your body. So the left knee is being drawn in and the right elbow is pushing the right knee away. Now, if that's too much, don't do it. But I know some of you have some open hips and this might be something applicable for y'all. Ujjayi pranayama. Keep going with that audible breath. Another thing that the audible breath does, it helps to ground your mind. The mind is attracted to sound, movement, and sensation. Ujjayi pranayama provides those three focal points. We'll stay for just a couple more breaths. All right, carefully release the left foot back to the floor and uncross the legs. Stay in center for a few breaths. Just feel sensation, what's happening in your body, your legs, your hips, your mind. And we'll do the same practice on the other side. So right foot is flat on the floor, heel underneath the knee, cross the left ankle, center of the right thigh, flex the left foot, protecting the ankle and the knee joint. Arms are down by your side, we'll come into half bridge and hold. Inhale, lifting up and staying. Now, as you stay in this pose, first find the Ujjayi breath. Keep activating strongly through your right glute or hip. Do try to not clench your teeth here. Try not to squeeze your eyes either. Try to keep the face soft. Two more breaths, stay up. And then exhale, carefully release the hips down. And then bring the right knee into your chest. Reach between the legs with the left hand, both hands hold behind the right thigh and draw the right knee in toward your chest. Keep the left foot flexed. And let's keep breathing here, Ujjayi Pranayama. Now, just like the first side, if you'd like to, you can use your left elbow and brace away the left knee as you draw the right knee into your chest. If that is too much, just don't do it. You may note as we do the second side that your access to this hip may be different. 
Maybe the side feels tighter. Perhaps the side feels more open. Just note it. It doesn't have to mean anything. It does not have to be significant. It just is. It's collecting information. Audible inhale. Audible exhale. Keep drawing the right knee in. You're doing great. Just a few more breaths. All right, so carefully release the right foot to the floor and uncross the legs, feel sensation for a moment. Good, so one more practice here on our backs. Go ahead and bring the knees in, bring the soles of the feet together, reach down and grab the shins, ankles, or the pinky edge of the feet, whichever you can grasp, and then draw the feet in towards your groin. Now it's tempting here just to pull the feet right toward the groin, like just heels to groin, but try pulling the feet above your body first and then downward more toward your belly. It's more fun that way. <laughs> Knees going out to the side. And find Ujjayi Pranayama. Do your best to keep that audible breath engaged throughout our entire practice this evening. Long holds, deep breaths. Good, all right, deeper breath and carefully release. If you want to, you can extend the legs down to the floor for a moment just to feel sensation in the legs and the hips, maybe in the lower back, the core. All right, when you're ready, go ahead and roll to your right side. And then come on up to hands and knees, take your time. But once you're here, let's come into downward facing dog. Curling toes under, lifting the hips into the air. And you guessed it, we're gonna be here for a bit. <laughs> so normally in our first down dog, we walk the dog out a bit and I'll give you the permission to do so, not that you need it. <laughs> but we can feel some stretch in the legs a bit. And then just see if you can come to more of a neutral place in this posture. The heels are grounding, the hips are lifting toward the ceiling behind you as the back flattens. Ujjayi pranayama, the audible breath. 
and grounding us in this practice. And what you may notice as we continue to hold these postures is that the quality of the pose changes over time. Where at first you might have felt some tension in this posture, maybe some of it's released. Or maybe it feels like you have more access to your legs or to your back here, or your shoulders. Good, all right. From here, come into plank pose. And with your exhale, plank yourself all the way down to the earth. Good. And have your hands underneath your shoulders, elbows bent. And with your next inhale, roll the shoulders down the back, peel the heart and head away from the floor. And let's come into Cobra Pose, Ujjangasana. Now it's tempting here in Cobra with the hands on the floor to push the floor away from you to lift up higher. Think about pulling the floor toward you to pull up higher, engaging the triceps, shoulders down the back, the heart looking forward, head looking forward. Can you find the audible breath here? Just a couple more breaths. And exhale, release on down. Take a breath or two here. We're gonna do a little bit more for our lower backs here. Just some locust pose. So with your next inhale, please lift the head, chest, and the legs this time. Squeezing up the legs behind you, shoulders down the back, heart is looking forward. Soften your jaw and ujjayi pranayama. Strong back. You're almost there. A couple more breaths, squeeze up. With control, exhale carefully, float on down. Turn the head to a side if you'd like. Feeling sensation, the lower back, the shoulders, or anywhere else you might be sensing. Turn your head to the opposite side to balance your neck. Good, all right. Downward facing dog, when you're ready. Good, we're gonna stay here for about 30 seconds or so just to help counter pose from what we've just done on our bellies. I promise it'll all make sense. <laughs> All right, so from downward facing dog, go ahead and lift your right leg high into the air. With your exhale, step the foot 
all the way between the hands. And today we're gonna to keep the back knee lifting for the high lunge. So a couple of options here, fingertips on the ground, or you can have blocks underneath your hands if you'd like to. Another option is to interlace the fingers on the front thigh. Honestly, this is probably as far as I would say go today. I mean, some people wanna lift their arms up, but we're gonna be holding this for a bit. So I guess you could transition between here and here if you want to, but it's better to pick something that's uh, more manageable <laughs> for, the, for the long term. But by all means, if you wanna lift the arms, just go for it. But feel the hips sink down and forward, feel the heart lift, soften the face, and engage Ujjayi Pranayama. Another note here, as we're holding these postures, especially as we're like more lifted, is to focus your eyes to a single point in front of you. The eyes are darting around, the mind is darting around. But when the eyes are focused, the mind is more likely to be focused. And if you have the hands interlaced on the front thigh, be sure not to press your entire weight into the thigh. Try to stay lifted, the core engaged here. Audible inhale. Audible exhale. The good news is if you're shaking, you're doing it right. <laughs> we'll stay for just a couple more breaths. And then go ahead and bring your hands down next to the foot and step your left foot forward, Uttanasana, standing forward fold. I'm just feeling a symmetrical stretch for a moment before we do the other side. And then let's do the other side. Your right foot's gonna move. Take the right foot way back, bend the front knee, back knee off the floor for this one. And again, options, fingertips on the floor or blocks. You can interlace your hands on the front thigh. And again, if you really wanna go for it, if you really wanna build some strength, you can lift the arms overhead. Keep in mind, we're gonna be here for a bit. So pick what feels sustainable. And focus the eyes, soften the face, relax the pressure on the thigh with the hands. Ujjayi pranayama. Ujjayi pranayama means the breath of victory. And it's not really victory over external circumstances so much as victory over the restless fluctuations of your mind. Your mind can make up so many stories about how this is hard or the body's shaking or I don't know if I could do this. There's a lot it could say. And they're just stories. None of it has to be true. And Ujjayi helps us just to bring ourselves so present that the mind doesn't really have the ability to start making up potential consequences <laughs> or spinning in whatever spin it wants to spin in. Audible inhale, audible exhale. Be light on the hands. Two more breaths. Keep the back leg straight. And then exhale, hands to the floor. Step the right foot forward, Uttanasana, standing forward fold. Hmm. But wait, there's more. <laughs> when you're ready, please step your left foot back. And go ahead and just take the back knee to the floor and look forward for a moment. I'm gonna demonstrate this one before we get into it. It's better if you're not in it already. And so what you may need are some props here. 
And I'll just show you how it looks with, with and without. So we're gonna do the high lunge again, but we're gonna do a, a hip stretch with it. And so once we're lifted, we'll bring the hands to the inside of the front foot and begin to drop the heart downward toward the floor. The back knee stays straight and lifted. And if the floor is far away, if this is too deep of a stretch for you, you can bring then the blocks underneath the hands and work the stretch here. Another thing that can happen as you open up is you could come down onto your forearms on the blocks if you can't reach the floor already, okay? So if you feel like you're gonna need some props, have them nearby when you're ready. With the back knee lifting, go ahead and come into the lunge first, just to feel the length, have the back leg straight. And then when you're ready, bring both hands to the inside of the right foot. Again, onto blocks or the floor. And just keep the front knee bending, keep the back leg lifting. And it's a slight bend to the elbows as you extend your heart to look forward and then also lowering it down toward the ground. Now there's a tendency here as well for the right knee to like knock out to the side. Have it try to like line up in center as much as possible. There's a lot going on here, so be gentle with yourself and always breathe. In this case, Ujjayi Pranayama, our favorite breath tonight. It's okay to use props if you have them, by the way, especially with these long holds practices. We go for sustainability. I know that some of you can easily come down onto your forearms for a short hold. But for a long hold, you might need more support. Breathe. One more breath, you can do it. Now to come out, drop the back knee gently. Walk back up onto the hands. And then sweep the right leg behind you. Child's pose. Let's just take a few breaths in child's. Good, then inhale back up. And then let's bring the left leg forward, doing the other side. And again, if you're gonna need props, have them nearby. If you even have the slightest inkling that you need props, have them nearby. Good, curl the right toes under, lift the back knee and come up to your high lunge, sinking in. Good. Now, once you're ready, bring the hands to the inside of the left foot. Good. You can bring blocks under the hands if you'd like to. Keep the back knee lifting. It's almost like the back inner thigh is spiraling toward the ceiling behind you. There's like this lift coming from that back thigh as you extend the heart forward and then start to release it down toward the ground. Are you breathing, Ujjayi? <laughs> audible inhale, audible exhale. You can use your props if you want to. If you want to.
especially as the practice gets harder. Ujjayi pranayama. Staying for just a few more breaths. And carefully release the back knee down. Straighten the arms. And then sweep the left leg back behind you. Child's pose. Notice sensation as you come to rest here. Good. Now, just as a transition, go ahead and come down onto your belly. There's a little bit of counter posing. Feeling the pelvis ground into the earth, lift up into locus, head, chest, and legs. Exhale, float down. We're going to do two more. Inhale, float up. Exhale, float down. One more time. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower down, curl the toes under, coming into downward facing dog. All right. So from downward facing dog, please step your right foot between your hands, help it through. The back foot comes flat to the floor, toes pointing forward about 45 degrees. Warrior one stance. So when you're ready, go ahead and straighten the right leg. Actually, we'll do this a different way. Bend the right knee, the front knee. Sweep the arms forward. Come up into warrior one. Then straighten the leg. We're going to come back into that in a moment, but we're going to do a bit more with the upper body here. So go ahead and interlace your fingers behind your back. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Lift the arms off the back as much as you can. Good. Now we've done too much with the upper body today, so this is going to help to warm that up a bit. Take a deep breath in. With your exhale, bend your right knee. Sink down into the warrior one stance. Take a deep breath in, feel length in the front of your body. With your exhale, go ahead and take your right chest to your right thigh and take the arms as far overhead as you can. Humble warrior. And we're going to be holding this for a bit. Find your Ujjayi Pranayama. Relax your jaw. Soften the shoulders. Keep the front knee bending. Just a little bit, little bit longer. And then release the arms, bring the hands to the floor. Go ahead and step the left foot forward, Uttanasana. Relaxing here for a moment. Now 
And the answer is yes, we do have to do the other side. We'll work through it in stages. We'll rely on our Ujjayi Pranayama to support us here. When you're ready, right foot steps back, back foot flat to the floor, bend the left knee, inhale, warrior one. Good, straighten the left knee. Interlace your fingers behind your back. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Lift the arms off the back again. Chest is opening. Arms lifting, breath breathing. Good, inhale. Exhale, bend the left knee. Take the left chest to the left thigh. Take the arms all the way overhead. Humble warrior on this side. And we breathe. Keep the front knee bending. Soften the shoulders. If your eyes are open, you can focus on a single non-moving point. Nujai pranayama. Keep holding, keep breathing. Again, noticing where your mind goes. Dropping it back into your body, back into this audible breath. You're almost there. Good, release the hands to the floor. Downward facing dog, stepping back. Feeling sensation in down dog. Coming down onto hands and knees. Release the feet, child's pose. Aware of sensation. In our culture, often when we trigger into the sympathetic nervous system, the fight or flight response, it's what I call superficial, meaning that it's not an actual physically dangerous situation. The mind just thinks it is. It's on a primal level, there's a level of threat happening. We can help to reorient that, to change the way that our nervous system kicks in. And one way is just to be aware of the body, to check in. It's like, is this body in any physical danger right now? Because if it's not, then we can work with whatever the threat is from a higher energy center, a higher mind. When you're ready, please slither forward down onto your belly. Good, you're doing great tonight. <laughs> These are not the easiest of practices to do and um, you're staying with it. You're staying with it. We're gonna practice bow pose next and I'll give you, I'll give you some options. Well, two options. One is to do bow pose, the other is to not do bow pose. If you aren't able to reach back 
and grab your ankles, if this just isn't something you can get into tonight, that is completely fine. What you'll do instead is locust pose. And you'll just come here and you'll do this pose instead. All right, so know that. But if you can, bend your knees, reach back and grab your ankles. Now, when you grab the ankles, you feel the pelvis pull away from the floor. So the deep exhale, press the pelvis downward and then push the ankles into the hands to lift yourself up hard away from the floor into bow. Okay, let's breathe here. And yes, the front body is lifting off the ground, but the thighs are lifting as well. The pelvis becoming that pivoting point of the upper body and the lower body here. And you can take effort out of this pose by allowing the feet or the ankles to push into the hands. Heart opening. Deep breaths. We're just going to stay for two more. Then don't collapse. Just carefully release yourself down. Let go of the ankles and turn the head to a side. Nice big heart opening practice a posture. Hmm. Turning your head to the opposite side. Feeling your body. Sensation. Your heartbeat. Your breath. Taking your time, bring your hands back underneath your shoulders. And we're gonna come into downward facing dog once again, pushing up and back. Now, anytime we do deep belly back bending like bow pose, it's good to bring the spine into some extension immediately afterwards. So soften the knees and shoot the hips powerfully toward the sky behind you to help lengthen your spine. Good, hands and knees and child's pose. Allowing your breath to relax. Allowing your mind to relax. One more breath here. And then come on up, either to a seat or hands and knees. I'll quickly demonstrate the next posture, which this is the last big one of the night. And it's asymmetrical, so we're gonna do it twice, once on each side. And yes, it's pigeon pose. Some of you saw that coming. Um, we've been working toward it all night, getting ourselves nice and warmed up to be able to hold this posture maybe a bit longer than we have in the past. And I'll give you some, some support on how to stay in it a bit longer. Okay, 
So a couple things you might need if you need support. One of them might be a blanket, and one of them might be blocks, OK? We'll find out as we go along. So pigeon pose. <laughs> We're going to start in a low lunge, back knee on the ground, front foot forward. And then I'm going to move the front foot over to the opposite side of the mat. So this is my left foot that's forward. I'm going to bring it over to the right side of the mat, and then release the shin down parallel to the front of the mat. And this is our starting point. Then I'll curl the back toes under, lift the back knee, take it back a few more inches, and then leave the back toes curled under. And the reason why here is if I release the back foot, I'm more likely to fall out of the pose. And I'm trying not to do that. <laughs> so rewinding that, coming back in here. Now, once you have the back foot back further, you can take the front heel and draw it towards your groin just slightly, but you don't want it so far forward that you come out, or so, sorry, so far back toward the groin that you come out of the pose. So you still want it a bit toward the front of the mat. Now, if you're here and your hip is like really far off the ground, what you can do is you can take that folded blanket and slide it underneath your hip, or maybe even fold it in half and slide it under your hip to give yourself something to sit on. You could also use a block if you wanted to, okay? And we'll stay here for a few breaths, feeling lifted. And you can stay here the entire time if you want to because you're still getting a good stretch in the hip. Now, after several rounds, you may want to start coming down onto your forearms. And this is where you might need some blocks because you might find yourself in a halfway point where you're somewhere in between arms straight and forearms on the ground. So these are some options for you. I'll walk you through it, and then we're going to hold for a bit on both sides. So go ahead and bring your left foot forward. Back knee on the ground, sinking into the hips. We've been in here a lot tonight. And then move your left foot to the right side of your yoga mat. Release the shin on down. Curl the right toes under, pick up the knee, and take it back a few more inches and keep the right toes curled under. If that back knee is sensitive, you can bring a blanket under it or just fold your mat up under it. And then bring the left heel toward your groin just a little bit if you need. Now, if you notice your hip far off the ground, again, that's where you can bring some support of a blanket or a block. Good, and then hands forward. We'll just lift the heart away from the floor, feeling the hips sink downward. Good. And let's bring back the Ujjayi Pranayama. Now, at any point you want to go further in this posture, go ahead and do so. Just move at your own pace and not a moment sooner than your body is ready. And you may notice, especially in this posture where there's tension being held, maybe it's the front of the right thigh, maybe it's deep in the left glute or hip, maybe it's deep in the pelvis. And when you notice that sensation, first breathe with it, and then invite that sensation to relax. Often these regions of the body tense up because we are spinning in that sympathetic fight or flight response. It's a protective response. But right here in this moment, this isolated moment of this practice, it doesn't have to do that job. It can release whatever it's trying to hold on to. And it's welcome to come back later to do it again, but in this moment, it can relax. Give it permission to soften. Audible inhale. 
Audible exhale. Notice when you get that impulse to leave the pose. When maybe the discomfort starts to be a bit too much. That's the moment that your sympathetic nervous system kicks in. And we know there's no danger here. We know it does not have to do that job right now. So breathe with it, soften, stay. Notice where you might be holding tension unconsciously. Are your teeth clenching? Is your jaw tight? What about your eyes? Can your eyes relax? The forehead, tongue. Can you relax your shoulders, your belly? Do you notice over time yourself sinking deeper into this pose? Can you stay just a little bit longer? Can you breathe just a little bit more? Right, when you're ready, carefully make your way back up onto your hands, be gentle. Bring the back knee forward a bit. Slide the front leg back a bit, moving props as you need to. And maybe it's a child's pose, maybe it's a down dog, but take a moment just to adjust. Good. Now we do have the other side to do. We will we'll be holding it for a bit. I think it's about four minutes on that first side. We'll do the same on this one. And you can uh, get into it with me. So from hands and knees, bring your right foot forward, low lunge. Be gentle with it. And then bring your right foot to the left side of your yoga mat. Release the shin down parallel to the front of your mat. Good, now curl the right, or sorry, left toes under, pick up the knee and draw the knee back just a few inches, feeling the hips sink down. Now, if the hips are still pretty far off the ground, this is where you'll bring a block or a blanket underneath that right hip, just to give it some support here, okay? Keep the back, uh, back toes curled under. And let's get settled. 
Feel the heart pulling away from the ground, looking forward. Ujjayi pranayama. So this is a completely different side. So sensation may or may not be the same. As we can notice that we have different access or flexibility, depending on which side of the body we're using, the tightness that we sense in the hip may be different here as well. So whatever comes up, breathe with it. Ujjayi inhale, Ujjayi exhale. Feeling the hips relax downward. Moving deeper into the pose as and if you feel ready. Where is your mind? Bring it to the body, be present with this body. Some of that security and safety that you seek is actually you being present with what's going on in here. Your body's ability to trust that you'll take care of it and you have to be present for that. You have to be with this. Whatever you're feeling, breathe with it. And as I mentioned on the first side, a lot of this tension is being held to protect you. But right here in this moment, in this practice, those muscles don't need to do that job. They're welcome to come back later if they want. But in this moment, you can feel secure. You can feel safe, cared for. You can trust yourself. You can breathe with whatever's there. You give it permission to unclench. And not just down in the hips, the unconscious ways that we hold tension, the eyes squeezing, the jaw clenching, relax it. The tongue in your mouth, the soft palate. Your shoulders, your hands. Soften your belly. Belly works so hard, relax your belly. And when the mind wanders, guide it back. This body, this moment, relax, soften, deepen. You're almost there. All right being gentle as we come out, coming up onto the hands if you're not there already. Bringing the back knee forward, sliding the front foot back. Good. Now it's a uh, player's choice on however you wanna adjust. 
Maybe it's a downward facing dog. Maybe it's a child's pose, maybe both. We will do, we'll be doing some counter posing, don't worry. Good. Now take your time getting there. Continue to adjust if you need to, but we're gonna come on to our backs for the last couple of exercises. Coming to lay down. Bring your feet flat to the floor. Bridge prep. And when you're ready, go ahead and scoop the pelvis up, lift the hips into the air, bridge pose. We won't stay as long this time, but do lift the hips up and keep them engaged as much as possible to help to counterpose some of the work we've done, especially with that last posture. So feel the glutes engaged, feel the lower back engaged, press up. Three, two, and one, release the hips down. And then walk your feet away from your hips about six inches and then take your feet as wide apart as your yoga mat, arms out to the side. And then with an inhale, drop the knees to the right. Exhale, ground your lower back to the floor and bring the knees back to center. And then inhale, take the knees to the left. Exhale, ground your lower back, come back to center. Inhale, right. Exhale, back. Inhale, left. Exhale, back. Keep going on your own breath, inhaling to a side. Exhale, ground the lower back to center. And if you'd like to, you can turn the chin away from the knees just to get a little bit of release in the neck. Inhaling to a side, exhaling to center. a few more times from side to side, unwinding tension in the hips, lower back, the muscles of the pelvis. Good. And the next time the knees come back to center, hug them in. Good. Curling the, the chin in towards your throat, bring your forehead up toward the knees, shoulders lift. Get a bigger uh, grip on the legs. And with that bigger grip, release back down onto your back. Deep breaths. When you feel complete in this posture, please extend your legs down to the floor and make any final adjustments you need to to rest comfortably here for a few minutes. Shavasana, our final resting posture. Allowing yourself to relax here. Aware of sensation in your body.
probably the hip flexors, the pelvis. And for those of you who know it, you might be able to sense the movement of energy, this downward and outward movement from the upper body down toward the pelvis and out. Apana Vayu. This grounding force. holding you to the earth, secure, so securely connected to the earth. Peace. 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 Please go ahead and take a deeper, fuller breath. Making gentle movements in your hands and feet, your arms and legs. When you're ready, roll to your right side. And coming on up to a seat. So 
So sitting tall, connect the tip of your first fingers to the tips of your thumbs on each hand, and then place the palms downward on each knee. Chin mudra, it's grounding. And feel the spine tall, shoulders relaxed, crown lifting, and become aware of your root once again. And just feel a groundedness there from our practice this evening, finding steadiness in our postures, in our breath, the support of Ujjayi earlier. And again, you may be able to tap into the sensation of Apanavayu, that downward and outward movement of energy. feelings of stress and worry, just being seeped out of your body through the root and into this earth who has held everything, all experiences on this planet she has held. She can hold yours as well. You have the support, strength, stability, security, Rooted, grounded. And knowing that the sensation, this state of being is something that you can return to time and again when you feel yourself ungrounded, when you feel like the stress, the worry, the anxiety become, becomes too much. You can return to this stability. So keeping yourself grounded, keeping yourself connected, take a deeper, fuller breath. Bring your palms together in front of you, bow the chin, just honoring that inner strength, that inner stability. And may all of your hard, hard work here tonight and this practice keep you connected to that state. So until we meet again, namaste.